Hello, my name is Jose Ignacio Rodriguez Labra, and I'm presenting on behalf of my co-authors. I am a graduate student at Western Michigan University, and I'm working in the Center for Smart Sensors and Structures. Today, I will talk about the development of a PPG sensor array as a wearable device to monitor cardiovascular metrics. First, the peripheral artery disease, otherwise known as PAD, is an abnormal narrowing of arteries. Current instruments for detecting PAD are expensive and not widespread. Diagnosis is highly important since patients with PAD have a high risk of death from cardiovascular disease. This affects Americans millions of dollars in buying the medical equipment for diagnosis and potentially increases risk for those who don't get early treatment. It is difficult to screen for PAD when someone is asymptomatic or have pre-ulcer conditions. A method for diagnosing PAD is by measuring the total branchial index, which is a ratio between the systolic and asystolic toe pressures. But this method is not widely available. Meanwhile, wearable health devices are focused on general fitness and not diagnosis. This work is centered in extending the use case of existing wearables, specifically to address PAD and other blood circulation diseases. The system needs to do continuous monitoring using multiple sensors to filter out environment variables. In addition to adding redundancy in sensor space in local areas for enhanced analysis, enabling sensor fusion to increase accuracy. So what is PPG? PPG is short for photoplethysmography. It uses light transmitters and sensors to measure changes in light absorption. From wearable fitness devices to hospitals, use PPG sensors to find and measure cardiovascular metrics in individuals. Why did we choose PPG? PPG sensors are non-invasive, which means no blood samples are needed. Placing the sensor on the skin is all that's needed. Also, Optical methods pick up different blood characteristics that are more advantageous than other physiological measuring techniques like electrocardiography. In addition, there is an abundant amount of research on PPGs that allow us to optimize our analysis algorithms. Typically, PPGs operate two types of LEDs, infrared and red light. The light absorption of infrared and red light is different between hemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin, which are the blood molecules that are either oxygenated or not. With these changes of light absorption, we can compute metrics like the heart rate, saturated oxygen, and blood volume. There are two main types of PPG sensors, transmissive and reflectance. In this case, we choose reflectance type PPGs so the user can easily and comfortably wear the device. When transmitting data, a channel represents a single PPG sensor. The characteristics of a PPG signal are shown below. We're mostly concerned with the systolic and asystolic peaks of the wave. The heart rate is simply calculating the frequency of this systolic or asystolic peak. Further, the difference between the peaks represents the AC component of the wave and the average value between the peaks represents the DC component of the wave. By taking the ratios of the AC and DC components, we can find the R ratio, which we can then use to compute the saturated oxygen. The system architecture we implement is a server-client relationship. The main wearable PCB board acts as the server and client, and the client is a mobile application website, or some other device connected to the microcontroller base server, subscribing and listening to the changes it posts. This way, it is easy to distinguish states and the microcontroller can control its notifications to the client. To briefly cover how this system works, here is the following flowchart. In step one, under data acquisition, the MAX3105 chip samples the PPG data. Then in step two, microcontroller pulls the data from the FIFO of the MAX chip. 
In step three, the microcontroller runs peak detection for pre-processing and filtering. In step four, a callback server is maintained to configure the number of PPG sensors and the modes it is being run on. In step five, the values are assigned to BLE characteristics that notify to a client. In step six, the client subscribes to a channel to receive a specific data form from the microcontroller. For example, read the red LED value from PPG number one. In step seven, the data is shifted into a buffer to simplify and ease aggressive user interface rendering. And finally, in step number eight, if, user, if the user so chooses, data can be stored in an external device to record for further analysis. We use the ESP32 micro. It has 240 megahertz. It is generally a very fast dual core microcontroller. We, and it has also BLE, a BLE control protocol built into the ROM. For the PPG sensor, we use the MAX3105 chip. It pulls the photodiode at megahertz speed. We use the MPU6050 as an inertial measurement unit, including which includes an accelerometer, gyroscope, and temperature sensor, which helps in filtering. All of these chips work under the I2C bus, and since we use multiple PPG sensors to separate the identical units, we use a TCA9548A, an ITC multiplexer to identify and discriminate between the sensors. All of these sensors are running under 3.3 volt logic. So our first design is shown. In the center, the main board components are located. This includes the microcontroller, battery power management, I2C bus, initial measurement unit, and other key components. On the extremities, the sensors are set in key locations of the foot. This system is all in one piece. The user is meant to place it as a sole in the, in the shoe and wear the shoe as they normally would while the system is running, collecting data, and transmitting it. If the battery runs low in power, a micro USB connection is available for charging, and the battery is easily replaceable. So if the user has an extra battery, they can quickly replace it and continue the wireless transmission. In the second version of the system, we split the board between the main controller and the PPG sensor modules. This allows us to place the sensor in locations other than the plane of the board, for example, the heel or the lower leg. The main controller board is small and can be placed anywhere non-obstructive. The sensor modules are connected to the board via a flexible wire. We hope to make these connections with flexible captain to reduce size and durability. It is possible to detach the sensors from the board so that if a sensor malfunctions, it is easy to replace it with another. Moving on, a 500 second experiment was performed on one of the MAX chip PPG sensors. The subject performed multiple breathing cycles involving deep breathing and holding the breath. This is to induce changes in the saturated oxygen of the user. On the left hand, the MAX chip records the PPG signal and on the right hand, a commercial PPG sensor measures the heart rate and oxygen saturation as a control. During the experiment, the data measured by the PPG is used to compute the predicted heart rate and R ratio. We can then compare the ratio with the commercial sensor for accuracy. From the zoomed image of the heart rate screen, we can confirm that the heart rate algorithm is accurate. On the left graph, we see the measured R ratio of the PPG sensor. The blue area represents the starting point of normal breathing to smooth the line to a baseline. The green area represents when the subject is doing deep breathing, increasing the saturated oxygen, and the red area represents the time the subject is holding their breath, decreasing saturated oxygen. As we see, the R ratio measured by the PPG sensor reacts to the changes in breathing. 
On the right, we see the saturated oxygen measured by the commercial PPG sensor. Using this set of data, we look for a relationship between the R ratio and the saturated oxygen. The graph in the left depicts the relationship between the R ratio and the saturated oxygen. By removing the redundant 99% data points, we see there is a linear relationship between the variables. Using linear regression, we can find a function that maps the R ratio to the saturated oxygen. This is shown in the graph of the right. We can see that the derived saturated oxygen closely follows the, satu the actual saturated oxygen. This allows us to accurately measure saturated oxygen in our system. So the system we built has the potential to improve healthcare diagnosis and cardiovascular metrics. It is open to many user applications and medical uses. The future work to be done is first to use the, the current rigid PCB and transfer it to a flexible PCB to enable more comfort to the user when wearing the system. Next, a NAND flash memory can be implemented in case of the event the user doesn't want to stream the data. It could hold a set amount of data to record. Using the current infrastructure of the system, deep learning modules can be embedded into the system to further analyze the data. Thank you very much for watching my presentation to Western Michigan University and to the CAS Laboratory. Thank you for watching.